Rick, thank you so much for joining us today. And we're keeping our six feet apart. And gosh, you hate to even make light and say there's anything considering a silver lining of what's going on, but you can spend a little bit more time with your dog. Talk to me. Absolutely. My name's uh, Rick with Bark Gallery, and I'm a uh, commercial pet photographer in the Valley. And uh, so a lot of people are taking this time. They're home with their pets. It's a great time to uh, enjoy more time with your pets and get them a little bit more dialed in. But Mia is a former shelter dog. She was rescued uh, about six years ago and, and uh, found a great home and likes, likes going out and enjoying the park, as you can tell. So we'll kind of use her to give some pointers and some tips on some different things that we can do. What are some of the common mistakes that your average person does? Everyone wants to take pictures of their dog or their cat or their pet, and they always take millions of them, but only some of them really shine. It is good to take millions of them and find the two or three that shine. Um, what the main little mistakes that happen are distracting backgrounds. So having her, at, you know, a lot of them are taken in very low light because it's your kitchen and the lights are off. Um, so try to look for spots where there's bright light. So today we're at the park, it's extremely bright and there's no real bad shadows. You can tell next to her that there's shadows. So that's probably not a good spot to photograph a brown dog. Try to keep your immediate area clean and think of what all is going to be in the photo. Um, you know, there's a lot of cute dog photos where all of a sudden your pair of socks is in the corner because that was what was in the, the background at the time. I, I always like attention. So in my photography, I always want the dog to look at the camera so that you can feel that look. So me is just enjoying the day and just kind of laying around. And when I want her attention, her favorite thing in the world is the ball. So now that I've got her attention, I just want her a nice even light. So I'm watching my shadow a little bit and I'll take my phone and I'll get ready and I'll go, Mia, ready? Yes, good girl. And I'll take a few pictures and I'll take a few more. And the thing is, is now with digital technology, especially your phone or your digital camera, uh, the film is free, as we would say. So you can take 100, 200 pictures of your dog. So try different things. Um, Mia, sit down. Good girl. And then just get low and you can get a cool shot. And she comes forward. I like that shot too. So on my iPhone, um, if you hold the phone, the, the camera button down, it'll take multiple pictures. And you can kind of slide through and look at those and get maybe some cute action shots. Um, the phone obviously will focus fairly close. So it's kind of neat to get like a forward shot with the dog filling most of the frame because that's what you want. How would it be different if you were doing things professionally as opposed to out here just having fun with your dog at the park with your iPhone? Your, you know, your cell phone, it's great because it is formulated to be on the screen that it's on. As soon as you print that or try to keep it, it, it just doesn't last. So when I'm photographing professionally, I'm going for something that can be printed and kept for, for a lifetime and you can watch it on your wall and it's archival and things like that. So now I've got my regular camera set up here. And so, like I said, I'm looking for a unique look that, that isn't always the same. Ready? Ready? <gasps> then what I do is we'll get her going. Go. And on her way back, I'll get down to her level. Come here, Mia. And I'll just get some fun. Rick, the Animal Foundation has hundreds of volunteers and you volunteer your professional services to help those animals get adopted. Tell me how you do that. The way that I started out years and years ago is I went down to the local shelters, rescues. There's a ton of dogs there that are looking for attention. It, it helps the shelters out to interact with the dogs and get them out of their element and give them some human interaction. The photos that you take in the shelter help those dogs immensely. Um, if you've seen an intake photo before, it's usually a dog and he's tied to a stainless steel vet desk and uh, it's just not the prettiest picture. Um, so the picture helps save those dogs. People are at home, they're looking through photos on the internet and they look and they go, oh, I love that dog. That dog is so cute. I can imagine that dog being a part of our family and that's usually tied in partly with the photo and the story and everything that goes along with it.